Has my personality changed since moving to the US? Am I religious? What's my ethnic background? And what's my favorite American fast food? Today I'll answer 42 personal questions about me asked by you. Servus and welcome back to my YouTube channel. And if you don't know me yet, my name is Felicia. I'm originally from Munich, Germany, but I've been living in Cincinnati, Ohio, off and on since 2016. So today's video is pretty much a subscriber special for 50 and 60,000 subscribers. So first of all, I want to say thank you guys so, so much for your support and for subscribing to my channel. And if you're not a subscriber yet and you want to become one, then just make sure to click that subscribe button for free. 60,000 really is a big number for me. And to say thank you, I'll give my best to answer as many of your personal questions that you guys have asked me as possible in this video. And since a lot of you guys keep requesting this, Part of this video will be in German with subtitles. This is only the second time that I'm answering any kind of personal questions about myself. If you haven't watched my last video on that yet, make sure to check that one out as well, because I'm obviously not going to answer the same questions again. Okay, so I have the questions here on my phone. So the first question is, what's your favorite city in Germany? So I probably have to say Munich because first of all, it's my hometown and it's also a very beautiful city but I'd say my second favorite city in Germany after Munich would be Hamburg. Also very beautiful, a lot of water, I can recommend. Have you found it easier to be vegetarian in the US or in Germany? Definitely in Germany. I mean, in my everyday life, it doesn't really make that much of a difference because I usually just get groceries and cook myself. But besides that, it's definitely harder to be vegetarian in the US, especially when you don't live on the east coast or the west coast. I just notice it a lot at restaurants. There are just less vegetarian options or vegan options on the menus overall. Um, sometimes there are none. But where I've noticed it the most is actually when getting to go food like a pre-made sandwich or salad or something like that at a store or a gas station or airport. So mostly when traveling. In most cases, there are zero vegetarian sandwich or wrap options, but like four different meat options. And sometimes even the salads all have bacon or chicken or some kind of meat in them. So <laughs> overall, I would say that I don't find it hard to be vegetarian at all. I haven't liked meat ever since I can remember Remember, but when you're on a road trip or traveling in some kind of way, then it can get tricky in the US. How are you dealing with the quarantine? Um, first of all, I'm very thankful that this doesn't affect me financially, nor does it affect my family, which I know is very different for a lot of people in the US, in Germany and all around the world right now. So above all else, I'm thankful. But Basically, I'm just staying home, trying to go for walks regularly, working out at home, which I've always done anyways. And I've been spending a lot of time with YouTube actually. So I'm pretty busy and haven't had a single day of being bored. Like I know a lot of other people have, but of course, like most of you probably, I miss seeing my friends and making plans for the future and just knowing what the future is gonna be like and going out and things like that, so. I'm ready for it to be over, but I know it's the right thing to do right now. Now that you have lived here for several years, have any of your mannerism changed in such a way that when you go back to Germany, your friends and family tease you about becoming Americanized or that fellow Germans even find slightly annoying? As an example, do you find yourself, at least initially, trying to engage Germans in Americanized happy small talk like a typical American? P.S. Now that I think about it, your very upbeat personality seems more typically American than German. Do fellow Germans comment on that? That's a good question question. I definitely say that my personality has changed in a way and I do like to bring some of the culture aspects with me whenever I go home to Germany, but I don't think that I do that in a very strong way. I'm still German and I know how things work in Germany and I basically switch between the two cultures depending on where I am, but also depending on who I talk to and which language I'm speaking. So as soon as I speak English, the American parts of my personality or behavior 
come out a lot more and vice versa. And when I'm in the US but I speak to a German in German, the things I say and how I say them is gonna be more German than American. And to your example, um, I think that since I've moved to the US, I do talk to people more and I'm overall more friendly when I'm in Germany now, but not in a way that you would really notice it or that my friends or family have been annoyed with it, I don't think, or at least nobody has told me that. One thing that I do catch myself do sometimes though is that I'll say something like, have a nice day to the cashier at the store and they're either not saying it back or not even paying attention to me or like, you know, responding in a very grumpy way. And then I'm like, oh yeah, that's right, I'm in Germany. Or another thing that I do in Germany now that makes me feel really dumb sometimes is that when I'm at a store and I have to scooch by someone very quick, even if I'm not even that close to them, I'll say, excuse me, in German, Entschuldigung. Because that's a very common thing to do here in the Midwest. But in Germany, it's not really a common thing at all. People get really close into your personal bubble sometimes, or may even brush you, depending on how packed it is. And they don't necessarily say anything, so I always feel dumb when I do that. And the other people also probably usually think that I'm weird or dumb because I've never gotten a response, I don't think. Like, every time I do that, people just look at me weirdly and they're thinking probably, is that person talking to me and why would she say something? And about my personality, um, I don't think it's more American than German. I mean, I'm more upbeat in English than I am in German, so my personality really changes a little when switching languages, which is the case for a lot of bilingual people. But no, nobody has ever commented on that and I don't think anyone thinks my personality isn't German. Also, I'm not always like I am in front of the camera, of course. I can be really quiet too when I'm not in a good mood. But overall, Germans also aren't as grumpy as many of you may think. They're usually pretty talkative and upbeat too when they're with friends and family. It's just when they're in public, they don't like to talk to strangers a whole lot. Have you ever been to Frankenmuth, Michigan, aka Little Bavaria? Or do you say Frankenmuth? Frankenmuth? <laughs> I would really say it German, Frankenmuth. I've read it so many times, but I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, I actually get that question all the time and I have not been there yet, but my plan is to go there with a few friends whenever it's possible again and also make a video about it. Which driving do you prefer? American or German? Autobahn or interstate? City or out in the country? When did you get your license or do you use public transportation to get around? Um, I see that this is a follow-up question on my video on driving and I'd say it depends on my mood honestly but I think overall I prefer American driving because I like the more laid-back atmosphere here but I think in an ideal world if there could be a mix of interstate and autobahn that would be perfect for me. So with a speed limit so that everyone goes at about the same speed at least and not with like a difference of 100 kilometers per hour but I'd like the speed limit to be at like 150 or 160 kilometers per hour. So like around 95 miles per hour. Um, city or country driving, just for driving, probably country. And about my license, I got my German license when I was 17. So the preliminary license. And my Ohio license I got in September 2019 when I finally bought a car here. And before that, I just drove with my German license whenever I did drive. But I also usually do use public transportation a lot when I'm in Munich. And I also took the bus a lot here in Cincinnati before I got my car. What happens when you go back to Deutschland to visit? Do you use your Ohio license? Do you have an international driver's permit connected to the Ohio license? Um, no, I still have my German license. All I did was that I got the Ohio license in addition to that just by going to the BMV, showing them my German license and my other documents and paying the fee. What do you think about the wall, male privilege and or feminism or other topics too controversial? Not sure if this is too controversial, but it's definitely too big of a topic to go into detail here. But I do consider myself a feminist and I find it shocking when people say things like they don't believe in a gender gap or a pay gap. Um, I also find it really interesting how women are often perceived very differently when doing the exact same things as men. Like how a male boss who is very self-confident and maybe strict is often more perceived as a good leader, while a female boss who's like that is often more perceived as 
bitchy, mean, or even unbalanced or something like that. There is a Twitter account called Man Who Has It All that I think addresses the topic in a lighthearted but also very eye-opening way because it reverses the whole topic of gender bias and switches out women for men and it makes you realize how ridiculous statements like these suddenly sound when it should really sound the same for both genders. Are you religious? And what differences in worship style have you noticed between the two countries? I'm not religious and there are a lot of differences actually that are definitely worth a whole video, but the biggest difference is probably that religion is becoming less important in Germany and more and more people are atheists, while a lot of Americans, even young people, are very religious. And most people who are religious in Germany are Christians and are either Catholic or Lutheran, while in the US the denominations are split up a lot more and there are also a lot of independent churches here. Favorite book, movie, TV show? Um, I don't really have a favorite book, but my favorite movie is the Back to the Future trilogy from the 80s, and favorite TV show is probably How I Met Your Mother, but there are really a lot of TV shows that I really like. Have you ever served in the Englischer Garten? That would be so cool, but unfortunately I'm not that cool. For those of you who don't know this, the English Garden is a park in Munich, one of the biggest inner city parks in the world, bigger than Central Park in New York, and there's a very famous wave in the Eisbach River where people surf all year long and a lot of pedestrians usually stop to watch them. But I personally don't even know how to surf, first of all, but even if I did, I've been told that surfing there is very different and a lot more difficult than surfing in the ocean. Are you in regular contact with your family in Germany and how are they doing? Yes, I am. I talk to my friends and family all the time and my family is doing well, fortunately. Thanks for asking. Do you have any siblings? Um, I do, I have a younger brother. American men or German men, which is better to date? Okay, um, that's hard to say because that's a very generalizing statement and I don't think I've dated enough people in my life to even make any kind of statement like that. But if you're interested in this topic, you should make sure to check out my video on dating differences if you haven't seen that yet. But if I had to answer this based on my experience with the two cultures and things that I've observed in my environment, I think that German men may be more mature and reliable and honest and don't play games as much overall but just because that's kind of like part of our culture in Germany. So I think it may be a little more equal and more transparent with German men when I'm generalizing, but what's better really depends on what you want from a partner. Are you going to make a Patreon page? Yes, I actually did. Since I asked you guys about it in one of my past videos and I got a lot of positive feedback, I decided to just do it and I actually just launched my Patreon page a few days ago. So if you'd like to become a patron for this channel, feel free to check it out using the link in the info box. But needless to say, I appreciate everyone who decides to support me by just being a viewer or a subscriber or by recommending my channel to other people because that's already such a big support. I'm German myself, but as you're living in the US, I'm wondering if the US foods are really that bad. I heard so many times that US Americans coming to Europe are overwhelmed by the taste of products, except for the sweetness. How do you, as a person from a European country, think about it? Um, I say that I agree. I think food in Europe is usually better, which doesn't mean that there isn't any good food here, but especially in the beginning, especially when I walked into like, fast food places or food courts or something like that, I often lost my appetite just from the smell of the grease mostly, but just like the smell. And about the taste, I'd say yes, uh, the flavor of food sometimes is pretty weak and Americans really like to mix food together with a lot of other things. While in a lot of European cuisines, we like to appreciate the actual flavor of just this one ingredient, if that makes sense. But the longer I'm here, the more I get used to it for sure. And also you kind of figure out what restaurants you like and which dishes you just don't like at all. So I've definitely gotten used to it, but I also just cook myself a lot. I know you're German in nationality, but do you have a known ethnic origin via genetic test or whatnot? I haven't done a DNA test yet, but I'll do a test soon. I just personally feel like it's almost impossible to have just one ethnic background in Europe since it's always been very dense. People have always moved around and mixed with other people from other places. So 
I sometimes struggle with this whole concept of being ethnically German, to be honest. Especially because that's not really a very common concept in Germany anymore. It was under the Nazi regime, of course, but nowadays I really only hear about it from either Americans or you read about it coming from, you know, right-winged Germans. But what I do find interesting is that I actually get a lot of comments on here of people saying that I look Asian and I just personally don't see that at all. So just to clarify, I don't have any Asian roots that I know of. All of my grandparents and great-grandparents were German, but my grandparents on my mom's side of the family actually used to live in Silesia, which became part of Poland after World War II. They actually had to flee on foot during the big evacuation of that area in January 45. So I guess what some people see in me would be that influence from Eastern Europe, but my grandparents were German. What is your favorite fast food in America? I don't like a lot of the fast food places here. Um, there also aren't a lot of vegetarian options usually, but if I had to choose, I'd probably say Taco Bell and BB Bob, which a lot of you guys may not know that place. It's not one of the big fast food chains, but I really like it. Are you musical at all? Can you play an instrument? I would say that yes, I am. I used to dance and sing and play the piano growing up. And I still know how to play piano, but I'm not really good anymore. But I can still play a few chords. Have you visited the Hofbräuhaus in Newport? How does it compare to the original? And finally, is it only a tourist location in Munich? Um, yes, I actually used to go to the Newport Hofbräuhaus quite a lot. And for those of you who aren't familiar with Cincinnati, this is a Hofbräuhaus located right across the river off Cincinnati in Newport, Kentucky. And it was actually the first franchise location by the original Munich Hofbräuhaus in the US. This was in 2003, I believe. And since then they have opened up locations in a lot of other US cities, but this was the first. And yes, Hofbräuhaus in Munich to me is mainly a tourist destination. I don't even think I've ever gotten real food there. And I think, I'm, I think I've only been there like two or three times. Um, I may have gotten a pretzel once, but it's obviously much bigger than the Newport one. And the Newport one serves a lot of the dishes in an Americanized version, kind of. Their Käsespätzle are really good though, in my opinion. Um, but all the meat dishes, I can't really tell you as a vegetarian. What I can say though, is that they have actual Hofbräu beer, which I enjoy every time I go there, even though I never drink Hofbräu in Munich, but when you're surrounded by American beer, it's definitely an amazing option. So I'd probably say that it's like half authentic, half Americanized, but one thing that actually makes me cringe every time I go there is the outfits of the waitresses. They wear these kind of short dirndls that aren't always fitted very well and they wear them with flat shoes and white knee socks. And that's just not really something that we do in Bavaria. What color are your eyes? I have watched nearly all your videos, but sometimes your eyes look gray, sometimes blue, black, sometimes brown, sometimes hazel. I assume you don't wear colored contact lenses or do you? What color do you consider them to be? Um, I think they're green, but they do seem to switch colors depending on the lighting. So I'm actually not 100% sure myself, but no, I don't wear colored contact lenses. How do you like your coffee? I don't usually drink coffee. I don't really like it and it doesn't wake me up either. But if I do drink it, it has to have a lot of milk and sugar. As a native German speaker who started learning English at a relatively young age and speaks fluently, when you dream, do you and others speak German, English, or is it a mix of the two? Also, has this changed at all since you've been living in the US? This is a very popular question, but I guess I'm just not the best person to ask this because I never remember people talking in my dreams. I almost want to say that I don't specifically dream that so that I just like, I know what's happening in my dreams, but I don't hear anyone talk. But maybe I do and I just don't remember the words, so I'm not sure if I even dream in any language and which language that would be. But if I do, I'm sure that it has changed since moving here. But I also never remember which language I've watched a movie in or which language I've had a conversation in. For some reason, that's just all mixed up in my head. Is there a food or drink you love, which you can get in Germany, but you can't in the States? I mean, I generally miss German bread and bread rolls in the US and also good cheese and other dairy products. Not very good in the US in my opinion. But one specific thing that I wish I could get in the US is 
mate soda. These drinks have become very popular in Germany in the past few years and they're sold by different brands but the best known one is probably Club Mate and it's a caffeinated carbonated drink based on this herbal tea from South America and other than coffee this really helps me to wake up but it's also not as unhealthy as energy drinks. They do have kind of like an iced tea drink in the stores here that is based on the mate tea but it doesn't taste the same and I didn't find it to be as effective either so mate is definitely something that I miss in my everyday life here and it looks like Club Mate even started a distribution in the US a while ago but apparently it didn't go very well because it seems like their online shop is inactive. So I don't know, Club Mate, if you want to come back to the US, I'm here, I'm waiting for you. What is the absolute best German wheat beer in your opinion, of course? Okay, ich glaube, das ist eine ganz gute Frage, um auf Deutsch zu wechseln. Also ich bin selber nicht so der Weißbiertrinker, aber ich glaube, die meisten Münchner würden wahrscheinlich sagen Erdinger Weißbier, Paulaner und vielleicht noch Schneiderweiße oder Weinstefaner. Aber ich glaube, die Frage kann man auch ganz gut weiterleiten. Also an alle deutschen Weißbiertrinker oder Weizentrinker, wo auch immer ihr herkommt, ähm, was ist eurer Meinung nach das beste Weißbier, was man weiterempfehlen könnte an die Amerikaner? Mein Lieblingshelles ist auf jeden Fall Augustina aus München. Have you understood any of the American sports yet? Sports like baseball and what they like to insist is football but is not. And as a German, do you follow the Bundesliga or have any favorite football teams? Ähm, ich verstehe die Grundregeln so ungefähr, aber ich bin einfach generell kein großer Sportmensch. Fußball schaue ich zur EM und WM meistens, also ich bin genau das, was die meisten Fußballfans hassen. Und Basketball finde ich auch ganz cool zum Anschauen, aber das mache ich halt auch nur, wenn mich Freunde fragen, ob ich hier mit zu einem Unispiel kommen will. Football verstehe ich immer noch nicht so richtig, obwohl es mir schon echt oft erklärt wurde. Aber ich sehe einfach immer nicht, was auf dem Feld abgeht. Baseball finde ich ehrlich gesagt nicht so cool zum Anschauen. Und zur letzten Frage, also ich bin inmitten von Fußballfans groß geworden. Ich glaube, das geht fast nicht anders in Deutschland. Als Münchnerin sind die meisten meiner Freunde und Familie natürlich Bayern-Fans. Und auch in meiner Familie sind eigentlich alle ziemlich fußballbegeistert, aber weiß auch nicht. Mir fehlt da anscheinend irgendwie ein Gehen. Also ich verfolge die Bundesliga auf jeden Fall nicht und ich habe auch keinen Lieblingsverein. Do you like Spezi? Ja, auf jeden Fall. Ich trinke eigentlich fast nie Softdrinks, aber wenn ich es mache, dann am liebsten Spezi. Und für alle Nichtdeutschen, zur Erklärung, Spezi ist ein Mischgetränk aus Cola und Fanta und von der Coca-Cola Company als Mezzomix verkauft. Do you listen to more German music or more American music? How much coverage do German artists get in Germany compared to international artists? What is your favorite German artist or band? What is your favorite American artist or band? Um, ich weiß gar nicht, ob ich das so genau sagen kann. Ich würde fast sagen, ich höre ungefähr halbe halbe. Also ich mag gute deutschsprachige Musik schon echt gern, aber ähm, da lässt sich ja auch immer drüber streiten, was da jetzt gut ist und was nicht. Mochte ich aber auch schon immer gern. Und auch was englischsprachige Musik von deutschen Künstlern angeht, finde ich vieles gut. Und in der deutschen Öffentlichkeit gab es auf jeden Fall mal eine Zeit, wo man kaum Deutsch gehört hat im Radio und fast alle deutschen Künstler englischsprachige Musik gemacht haben. Aber ich würde sagen, so in den letzten 10 Jahren, vielleicht 10, 15 Jahren sogar, ist der deutschsprachige Pop wieder zurückgekommen. Aber es ist auf jeden Fall immer noch mehr Englisch als Deutsch im Radio. Und Lieblingskünstler ist wirklich schwer zu sagen. Ähm, zu meinen Lieblingskünstlern aus Deutschland zählen aktuell auf jeden Fall Anne Mai Kantereit, Emilio Sakraja, Timothy Ault, Crow, aber auch Jennifer Rostock, die jetzt gerade nicht mehr aktiv sind. Und amerikanisch bin ich großer Fan von den frühen Alben von Jason Mraz, das aktuelle nicht so. Und der Rest verteilt sich so krass bei mir, dass ich das gar nicht benennen kann, ehrlich gesagt. Do you have a pet? If you were to get one, what would you get? Also ich habe eine Katze in Deutschland und meine Mitbewohner hier haben auch zwei Katzen, also Antwort ist definitiv Katze. Du bist seit 2016 in den USA. Hast du kein Heimweh nach München, Bayern, den bayerischen Traditionen, Bier, Knödel und so weiter? Also ich bin eigentlich relativ regelmäßig daheim und wenn man will, kann man in Cincinnati auch bayerisches und Münchner Bier kriegen und bayerisches Essen. Aber ganz ehrlich, bayerisches traditionelles Essen ist für mich sowieso immer schon schwierig gewesen als Vegetarierin. Und es ist jetzt auch nicht so, dass ich das so oft gegessen habe, also auch zu Hause alle paar Monate mal, ehrlich gesagt. Ich habe letztens zu meinem Geburtstag Käsespätzle gemacht und auch Semmelknödel mit Rahmschwammel und Blaukraut. Und das war auch geil mal wieder zwischendurch, aber ich halte es halt auch gut ohne aus. Und Heimweh 
habe ich tatsächlich eigentlich fast nie und wenn dann eher nach den Menschen und jetzt nicht so sehr nach dem Ort. Aber ich glaube, das liegt halt auch daran, dass ich ja auch regelmäßig immer wieder da bin. Ähm, aber mit den Menschen kann man ja Gott sei Dank telefonieren und FaceTime und so weiter. Ich wohne in NRW und für meinen späteren Berufswunsch muss ich gut bis sehr gut Englisch können. Hast du Tipps, wie man lernt, flüssig Englisch zu sprechen? Also es ist auf jeden Fall natürlich wichtig, einen Wortschatz aufzubauen und die Grammatik zu beherrschen. Und dazu sind auf jeden Fall Kurse gut oder Sprachlern-Apps oder sowas. Und um quasi die Alltagssprache zu lernen, die Aussprache und wie die Leute die Sprache eben wirklich benutzen, würde ich auf jeden Fall empfehlen, Filme und Serien anzuschauen auf Englisch. Am Anfang vielleicht welche, die du eh schon kennst und vielleicht sogar mit Untertiteln, aber dann halt auch irgendwann mal was Neues. Und du wirst sehen, auch wenn man am Anfang gar nichts versteht, da kommt man dann irgendwie schon von selber rein, weil man dann eh die Handlung so ein bisschen versteht. Und YouTube-Videos sind bestimmt auch ganz gut. Du hast eine sehr angenehme und saubere Aussprache sowie einen flinken Redefluss. Darf ich dich fragen, wie gut besonders deine rhetorischen Fähigkeiten sich in der Zeit, seitdem du in den USA wohnst, verbessert haben? Oder ob du bereits hier in Deutschland so eine ausgeprägte Rhetorik hattest? Lange Frage. Ähm, Dankeschön erstmal für das Kompliment. Also ich denke mal, meine Aussprache im Englischen hat sich auf jeden Fall verbessert, seit ich hier bin. Aber ich habe halt auch davor im Radio- und im Fernsehbereich gearbeitet und habe da sehr viel gesprochen und auch Sprechtraining gehabt. Und auch rhetorisch war ich schon immer ganz gut, würde ich sagen. Aber ich glaube, da entwickelt man sich sowieso von alleine ein bisschen weiter. Einfach, wenn man älter wird und mehr Erfahrungen sammelt und so weiter. Okay, and then there are a few quick questions that I saved for the end. And I'll answer those in English again. Do you prefer Felicia or Feli? Um, depends on the context. Usually Feli with my friends and family. But in the US, I usually introduce myself with Felicia first. Because Feli is really hard to understand and also to say for most people. What's your zodiac sign? Pisces. What do you think of American chocolate? Um, it helps me eat less chocolate, so that's a good thing, but doesn't taste as good as German or Swiss chocolate. Do you consider yourself an introvert or an extrovert? Honestly, I'd probably say both, but if you look at the official um, definitions, I'm probably more of an introvert than extrovert. Night owl or early bird? Night owl, for sure, like night, night, night owl. Does pineapple belong on pizza? Yes, it does. Do you intend on having children? Yes. Are you confrontational? Yes, I'm very confrontational. Germans are already more confrontational than Americans, but even for a German, I am very confrontational. Are you a patient person? No, not at all. And last question, do you like to dance? Yes, I love dancing. I used to dance ballet and hip hop growing up and I also did some ballroom dancing for a little bit. And even now I try to dance whenever I can, trying to take some online classes during these times. So yes, absolutely. Okay, so that was the last question that I had picked out. 42 in total, that's quite a lot. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed getting to know me a little bit better. And again, thank you so, so much for your support, whether that's by commenting or hitting that thumbs up button, being a subscriber to my channel, or just watching some of my videos every now and then. And for those of you who'd like to support me even more, feel free to check out my Patreon page, link in the description, and become a patron of this channel if you want to. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're all being safe and healthy and I hope I'll see you next time. Tschüss.